We're always talking about consciousness is growing and consciousness is evolving. But uh, we're probably judging ourselves to see, have we evolved yet? Is it getting better? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, but I mean, there wouldn't be some uh, evidence of it, wouldn't there? I mean, what would it look like to be a conscious being? Yeah, I think one of the, there are a few different manifestations, but one of them is that um, you start to have a separation from um, your personality, so you can look at it a bit like you've got it on low, or rather like you're watching a, a TV screen, so there's a, a, a separation from that feeling of, you know, this is me and it's all really serious, and, you know, you can start to actually laugh at it, or you can joke about it, or you can, um, you know, talk with your friends about your follies and the things that you, the things you do wrong, and, you know, just just um, not take it all so seriously. So, so rather like when we're watching a movie on, on the TV of a volcano exploding, we don't suddenly get total horror in our hearts and, you know, and rush out of the house and, and feel like it's all terribly serious. We, we have a separation from it. So we go, wow, that's a good story, you know, mm -hmm. so that we, able, we start being able to do that with ourselves. Oh, look, that was a good story I just created there yeah. to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One guy I used to go to, you know, he used to refer to the self as kind of like a, a suit of clothes. And mm, if you're in yes. it so tight, you know, you turn around, what suit of clothes? You know, I don't see nothing, you know. But if you kind of get loose in there, you can bobble around in there and say, oh, yeah, that thing is rubbing me over here. <laughs> okay. what? Yeah. Yeah. So that, like that. Yeah. So well. he, said, he would always say he's trying to create space in us, right? You know, that. Yes. That he would create some kind of space. Yeah. And then with that comes the. Um, the end of, of personal suffering so much. You know, there may still be some bits of suffering, but if you're not taking yourself so seriously, and my problem that only I have, you know, and no one else suffers as much as I suffer, which is what we do a lot, then, uh, you, you know, you start, it just becomes less. So life becomes a bit more equanimous and calm, and, you know, you're not suffering so much, really. So suffering, you know, I've never minded saying that with... Uh you know, like about my own suffering to say that it's not, it doesn't have that much substance to it, you know. But I always kind of get upset when people say that about other people's suffering, you know, and project that on others too and say, well, their suffering's not real, their pain's not real, mm. stuff like that. But, mm. but when it's focused here and then when it comes out of insight, mm. then I think, okay, that's a beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, another thing is that you can... Um, you find this running commentary going, so, you know, we, we do something, but then our mind, so you just do an act, and that just happens spontaneously, and, you know, it's as it is, but then our conditioning comes in and has this running commentary about it, oh, well, you know, if only I hadn't done that, but I'd done that, um, you know, I would have saved some money, or I would have saved that relationship, or, you know, and you have this running commentary, so there's this continual mind Especially assessing. about the past, right? Especially. In other words, because the past, nothing can be done about the past. So yeah. then it's totally futile, right? Totally futile. Until you can realize that, that, you know, no matter how right that commentary is or how right on it is, it's totally futile no mm. matter what, you mm. know, how, how accurate it could be. Yeah, so when we're doing that all the time, we're wasting, you know, we do 2% action and then, you know, 98% commentary, commentary yeah. about <laughs> it, you know, should, yeah. should I, shouldn't I, what only, you know, what if. So I think that's great if we can, um, and that is a quality of, of consciousness, I feel, that that commentary recedes. I'm not saying it needs to go totally, but that you don't have so much of it. So there's more of an acceptance of, well, I did that in this moment, and, you know, let it be. Yeah, don't maybe sometimes judge you're just in the flow more, and you're not even doing things, and somehow there's a more trust to the flow, and so then the commentary is not that useful because you didn't really yes. cognate or calculate that activity. You just are trusting a flow. Exactly. Yeah. Then that's what it is. It's a learning to trust that even if your action may five minutes later appear to have been wrong yeah. or not serve you. That, that there's a there's a greater wisdom and that very often we can look back at past events in our life and say, you know, at the time may seem drastic. For example, you know, my, my husband left me. So you might go, oh, that's just the worst thing that ever happened. But 
after a short period of time, you can go, well, thank goodness he left me. Mm -hmm. Because if not, that wouldn't have given me the space to be able to study this or uh, realize this or become aware of that or, you know, and as you, as you go on with the, um, the wisdom of time, you can look back and see that, that everything was in fact in its right place. And may, may I tell an old uh, Indian story? Oh that yeah, go for it. it. <laughs> There's a very cute story that goes, must have been told for 6,000 years, I'm sure, of, of a man with a white horse. And he was a very poor man and he had one son and he hardly had anything, but he had one white horse, and this was his most precious thing. So then one day, the horse escaped, and all the villagers came to him, oh, this is such bad news, your horse has escaped. And he just said, whatever will be, will be. Okay, yeah. sarah, sarah. And uh, sure enough, uh, a week later, his white horse came back with this whole pile of white horses, like 20 white horses, and him and his son managed to corral them and the villagers came to him and said, wow, that was so lucky, you know, your horse ran away, but he came back with all these horses. Ah, whatever is, will be. So um, then his son is riding these 20 horses to try and break them in and one of them throws him and he breaks his leg. Oh, the villagers say, this is just terrible, you know. And the father is like, well, what, whatever is, you know, will be, it's okay. And then next week, the army came through and they were taking all the sons of all the families to fight in a war that they knew they probably wouldn't return from. And his son couldn't go because he had a broken leg. So, you know, the moral, the story goes on and on like that. So just you never know. So once there can be this acceptance of, you know, who knows and, and a trust that existence does somehow have you in its arms and does have your the your, your highest consciousness in 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 its heart in his mind then there can be that acceptance and that and that flow and not and just to leave the mind and its judgments aside for a while because you know the truth will reveal itself and mm. often in the moment it is beyond our comprehension so don't try and understand it right i'm glad you said that story because you know uh, people might have thought that if their husband didn't leave them, they didn't, uh, you know, it's not specific to just husbands leaving, you know, it's just whatever happens to you. <laughs> yeah. So then these are like benchmarks or, I mean, just things you notice, right? Yeah, these are things you notice. that's right. Just, and, and I also notice sometimes that, um, that I can find that in the middle of quite busy activity that there is a certain stillness. And again, it's like... Um, um, you know, periods of my life, say when I was very busy in my big office with lots and lots of employees and, and you just wonder, you know, how can I engage myself in this busyness of the, of the fashion industry, you know, with deadlines and people being late and all sorts of sagas. How can you engage in that and still remain in uh, equanimity? equanimity? And, and I used to find that there was a certain stillness in, in the better moments, that there's a stillness that could be present that meant that there was just a very natural, intuitive, unmental uh, movement between the, ne the, the task now and the next task. So, oh yes, you, you, know, you see the piece of paper, oh, write that fax, and you write the fax, and you send the fax, and then you wander outside and somebody addresses you with the next problem to be solved and so you, you deal with that problem and then, you know, that it arises and that in fact it doesn't serve again to have that, that, that worry, how are we ever going to get through this um, unsurmountable problem of getting all these goods out for the correct deadline, that actually if you really stay in the moment and allow that stillness to be, that even in the midst of very busyness there that um, it, it gets it gets itself done so was that not typical for you in other words in uh, you if that was a really big change or if that was if you were always kind of that like, was uh, a really big change that I felt after particularly after being with Papaji just I mean perhaps because of being with him one never knows and I um, 
uh, suddenly my business took off exponentially, my orders to Italy, um, you know, hundredfolded overnight. So it was suddenly like, you know, it's, we have to really, really work hard and long hours and everyone needs to be on going as fast as they can, you know, to make the orders and so on. Um, but then I used to discover that, that uh, just even in the midst of activity, there could be this uh, overriding sense of stillness. So, so much of the evidence of how we are with ourselves show up in our relationships. Mm. And that's probably going to be a big change too, right? That's the, the best mirror we have, isn't it? Our, our one-on-one -on -one direct relationship seems to be the, the clearest mirror to reflect back our, our states. But, but I, I also feel as if um, when you're in that more conscious state, then there can be a much greater understanding of where the other person is coming from. And so um, there's more there's more clarity and compassion and understanding around that person so you you can yeah appreciate where they're coming from and therefore there isn't the grudge holding that we often do where we really we resent something or we we take things as a, so often we take things personally oh yeah when what when just came to really me was yeah what just came to me was like we don't even have to understand where they're coming from but we can just give them a lot of options and saying well who knows where they're coming from but mm. they had the right to to not even know, you know, yeah, just, to, uh, that's right. yes. just to be coming from whatever their discovery of the moment is. Yes, that's right. But I think with, um, yeah, and when, when, you're in the, when you're in the moment, of course, how can you hold a, you can't really hold a grudge or a resentment about somebody not fulfilling your ideals in that moment, yeah? So, again, there's this whole relaxation that goes around where you're not, one partner isn't constantly trying to change the other one, you know, which is something that we Especially in business, in too, because like in business, you really want someone to, to dance to your rhythm, right? Mm. Well, yeah, and my experience in the world of business was that I needed to go along with my multi-million dollar clients <laughs> and say yes whenever I possibly could. In fact, that was the, the um, that was the seed of my success, I think, was that I basically always said yes, I accommodated to whatever their requirements were. I was the small, I was the supplier, no, they're the, they're the big business, so just keep molding around them and keep saying yes. So, and that's, I guess, is the key in, in relationship too, if you want to have a, a real um, long-lasting relationship, is being able to allow the other and to move around, dance around that um, without preconceived ideas. Well, that goes really a lot farther than just relationships because, you know, the miracle of being able to say yes. Mm, yes. Yes to your own life or yes, yes to opportunities or yes. yes to your problems or yes, yes. I mean, you know, yes. and yes. not always be having uh, some other kind of a solution or some scenario running so strongly in your head and mm. only if. Mm. I think it's a huge key to life that you, what you're saying there is the ability to to say yes to whatever the circumstances are and to have enough trust as well that when proposals or opportunities come to you that you that you say yes. Somebody proposed they come to Australia. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, you just jumped in and somebody proposed, come to Australia. Okay. You know? I got it. I probably had a huge yes there that was just in a big closet back there. You know, the moment I opened the door, pow, they came running out and rolled me over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because also, again, if you, if you have that basic trust that I like to call it just existence, others would like to call it God, you know, I'm fine with that word too. That you know, if you if you can have that basic trust that existence is going to bring you what you need, and that a, a lot of us spend a lot of time going, oh no, not that, or not now, or well, I didn't want it to look exactly like that. If, if it just looked like that, I could have said yes, you know. And actually, what we're doing is just closing closing the doors because things come in from unusual angles sometimes, and you can't yeah. 
You can't well, I mean, you, we think we're controlling it, but we're making our life so narrow because all these yeses will mm. take us out into wider and wider spaces, you know, and then we're saying, no, in fact, I want to be more narrow. I really got to get that thing done right there. Right. So if I throw, and I'm not really good enough to be like this, so then if I would put all my energy on that one spot, I can yeah. burn a hole there, right? Right. It must all come out of inadequacy. Yes. Yeah, that's right. You know. Yeah, inadequacy and, and the sense of lack and, and, and not trusting. Yeah. That, that, that existence will provide miracles of miracles <laughs> miracles will happen now to the small things and, and just because yeah we, we managed to say yes to some small thing that uh, all sorts of other doors open up so I think yeah. that I like the movie The Yes Man you know, that was oh, yeah. pretty extreme John Carey where he said yes to everything oh, wow. <laughs> really got himself in trouble because so yeah, you still... do get yourself in trouble with yes because then you yeah. got to follow up sometimes you know well that's true yeah and also, there still needs to be some kind of um, basic intuitive discrimination, I guess. You know, on some, on some way, you just you you trust your intuitive feeling. Does this feel right or not? Yeah. And go with but that. you know, if we want to even go deeper, so what's under yes? Underneath yes must be some basic uh, acceptance of engagement. You know, something about engagement has to be valued because no is always disengaging. Mm. So something about engagement <coughs> mm. and, you know, a wider circle of friends or relationships or mm. even obligations or promises. Yes. I mean, being a master of our promises probably is really a key to life, too, because mm. we either promise too little or too much. Mm. Yes, I mean, I, I think um, there's a, a place for if you with some friends one can make the make the promises but also have the understand understood agreement that if that moment doesn't suit so well that it, it could happen in another moment you know so that so there you go yeah. that's a technology <laughs> of promises is amendments <laughs> right yeah that's fair. But you can, but you can with your dearest dearest friends. No, you you mm. might have made a promise, but then that promise can be. Your friend will love and understand you enough if you say, "Oh, I just need to cancel that four o'clock today, but can we make it tomorrow?" You know. So. Right, but I mean, I wonder if that could be applied in, even in the business world. I'm mean, I'm sure amendments, you know, of course, contracts and all that stuff. But anyhow, mm. we can we can take this everywhere, right? That's right. They apply in all areas of life. They're general general guidelines for happy functioning. <laughs> So yes, that's what I'd say about some of the ways that it looks like to be more conscious. Yeah. Thank you.